The end game, consisting of strongholds and raids on heroic difficulty, are tough to beat. Your team will take a lot of punishment and you will be the supporting pillar beneath them. As a combat medic, your healing and support allows your group members to focus solely on DPS, in turn increasing your group's effectiveness massively. Pun intended. However, you will not only be an effective healer, you will also be an effective damage dealer too. Within the boundaries of the build, I increase the DPS as much as possible, resulting in a well-rounded combat medic build. Creating a complete build is very hard, as there are many factors to take into account and many stats to add to your build. For that reason, I will provide you with an overview of all the stats on the gear, weapons, skills and specializations. So you don't have to. As the build revolves around repairing armor and enabling your group members DPS and survivability, the logical choice is the survivalist specialization. It provides a variety of perks and bonuses that will improve the build, but I will only list the ones directly relevant to the build. First we have Triage Specialist. When upgraded to the third level, it increases your outgoing healing by 15%. Speaks for itself. Distributed Repair applies the armor repair over 5 seconds, but the repair effect now also applies to group members within a 10 meter radius. This provides another way of healing your group members, basically a third skill, and it can even be used proactively when you know your group members are about to take damage. The Flicker Seeker Mine mod allows the mine to release nanobots that can repair armor. The specialization also unlocks the Magnetic Disc and Larea Tridentata Infusion, respectively increasing the cooldown reduction and the amount of healing the skill provides. Crunch Time reduces your skill cooldown by 10% when in cover, decreasing the time it will take you to ready your healing skills. EMI increases your Assault Rifle damage up to 15%. As you'll see later, the Assault Rifle will be our primary weapon, and this is one of the reasons. Finally, the Incendiary Grenade on the one hand applies status effects, and on the other hand can de-immunize named enemies when they're invulnerable, like Mila, Wife and Radek at the end of Tidal Basin Stronghold, and this enables your group members to effectively deal more DPS. Moving on to the gear, I'm going over each of the 6 gear items, including their brand set, armor, attributes and mods. In the overlay you can find the details regarding the min-max numbers and descriptions. Before you take in the choices I've made, keep a few things in mind. First, the number of attributes and mods you see on screen will always roll on that particular item as you see it on screen. For example, the Extreme Pro Ribcage chest piece from Alps Summit Armament will always roll with 1 talent, 2 attributes and 3 mods. However, you can also earn the Reinforced Utility Fest from Alp Summit Armament, which has a different number of talents, attributes and mods. Secondly, the mods, besides being divided into Offensive, Defensive and Utility, are also divided into Protocol and System mods. Whether it rolls one or the other depends on the slots of an item you've acquired. But here's the twist. Protocol and System mods have exclusive roles. For example, a defense protocol mod will always roll health as a primary attribute, where a defense system mod will always roll armor as a primary attribute. Thirdly, I couldn't find a spreadsheet with the absolute min-max numbers, so the numbers I've based on the highest attributes I could find in-game for an item. To guarantee maximum efficiency, follow the details from the overlay. Starting with the mask, you want to run the Field Protective Mask with the Providence Defense brand set, as this will grant you increased skill power. The common talent it has is Capacitive, which we want to roll over Empowered or Surge, as skill power and cooldown reduction will roll with attributes and mods, and it doesn't increase our healing. We want to use those to reach skill power requirement on the skills and unlock weapon talents. The skill power requirements for the skill mods on the chem launcher will roughly be 1700, additionally you can increase it up to 2300 for the mods on the hive we will run. However, we don't necessarily need more than the 1700, as it will do pretty much nothing for our build. However, we do need at least 9 utility attributes to unlock one of the weapon talents, meaning we can't roll too many other attributes. For the mask, these rolls will be skill power and health, as it comes with no mods. The chest piece is already more interesting. We will select the Extreme Pro Ribcage from Alps Summit Armaments and together with two other pieces this will unlock cooldown reduction, skill power and hive skill power. 
On top of that, we will once again select the capacitive talent and two attributes will roll on this piece, one with skill power and the other with bonus armor. As it only has two attributes, it will come with three mods, one utility, one defensive and one offensive mod. What exactly you want to roll for each one is on the screen. The holster is quite interesting as it boosts both our DPS and skill power without holding back the build in other ways. We'll select the Fodoro holster from Fenris Group AB and for its talent we're selecting Devastating. Although the holster can roll an active offensive talent, it can't roll any proper ones, so we'll roll a common one. Its attributes can both be offensive, defensive or utility. With our build, we'll roll the cooldown reduction and skill power. No mods are available on this holster. The backpack is the pillar which supports this build. Similar to the chest piece, the mountain hiking pack is from the Alps Summit Armament brand. Capacitive is once again the talent rolled, but we can now also roll an active talent. Safeguard is the talent we want as it increases our healing by 150% for 5 seconds upon getting a kill. Although this can only occur once every 20 seconds, this will drastically improve the usefulness of our build. On top of this, the attributes and mods both revolve around utility, meaning skill power, cooldown reduction and other specific roles. The knee pads are a little less interesting, although to increase skill power I first opted to go for Providence defense, I've decided not needing any more skill power to select the patella knee cups from wife and wear. As we'll only unlock its first bonus, we increase our critical hit damage. Its common talent, which will have to be offensive, will be devastating. But besides this, you can roll an active talent as well. Locked to utility, I've selected calculated. It decreases skill cooldown by 20% when getting a kill from cover. It only rolls one attribute and here will increase the skill power and with it comes only one mod, an offensive one. The climbing gloves from Alp Summit Armaments activates its third bonus. You want to roll capacitive as the common talent the attribute we'll roll here, which is only available on gloves, is Assault Rifle Damage for a maximum of 7%. This might be more, but I haven't seen any higher. Selecting this item means we have one offensive mod slot. The specific roles are displayed on screen. This should bring the build to a total of 10 utility, 4 offensive and 2 defensive attributes. As I mentioned, you're a combat medic, meaning that your damage output is also good for a healer. You're equipped with a primary and secondary weapon as well as a sidearm. The secondary weapon and sidearm are less important as the build will revolve around the primary weapon. The weapon you will primarily be using is the custom P416G3. It's currently the assault rifle with the second highest burst and sustain damage. It's the only assault rifle that performs this well in both categories. On top of that, its accuracy and stability are amazing too, meaning you can select talents and mods that increase the damage or usage of skills even more. As your group members are more in min max towards DPS, you will focus mostly enemies with the red health bars, unless it requires you otherwise. The health damage that naturally comes with assault rifles increases your effectivity even more. As any high-end weapon, it comes with three weapon talents, an active, passive and holstered weapon talent. The active weapon talent Reformation increases skill repair and healing by 25% for 25 seconds when killing an enemy with a headshot. Keep in mind that in order to unlock this talent it requires you to have at least 9 utility rolls. The passive weapon talent Allegro increases the rate of fire by 10%, effectively increasing your DPS by 10%. And the holstered weapon talent Rooted increases your skill damage and healing by 25% for 10 seconds while this weapon is equipped and you are in cover. Upon exiting cover the buff is lost, but it can occur once per 25 seconds. For any skill build, this is a must-have talent. Improving upon the weapon and its talents, we can select 4 mods. What you select here is up for debate, as there aren't really any wrong choices here. In the optic slot, I recommend equipping the ACOG scope with the 4x zoom, as it increases the optimal range by 20%. There is another reason related to the holster talents from the secondary weapon, which we'll get into later in the intel brief. The magazine slot will house the sturdy extended 5.56 mag, which increases the magazine size by 10. Alternatively, if you don't have this one, the light extended 5.56 mag is also good. In the underbell slot, I'll equip the short grip, increasing the critical hit damage by 10%. To complete this weapon, let's select the Muzzle Break 5.56 in the Muzzle slot as it increases the damage to Elites by 5%. Like I said earlier, the secondary weapon is of less importance than the primary one. I saw Marco style select the Chatterbox for its holster talent, although it's strong, I prefer equipping the Nemesis Exotic Marksman Rifle. 
Although the build is not specifically built towards marksman rifles, the Nemesis' extremely high base damage and damage increasing exotic talents make up for it. At longer ranges this allows you to get those headshot kills to proc your talents, even against stronger opponents. But it's the holster talent that is the main reason I picked it. In itself it increases the effectivity of our primary weapon, meaning we can keep using our assault rifle. Its active weapon talent, Counter Sniper, increases our weapon damage between 0 and 100% based on how long the trigger is held before releasing. The time to reach max weapon damage is reduced whenever a shot does not kill an enemy it hits. The passive weapon talent, Nemesis, marks an enemy as your nemesis for 15 seconds when aiming at an enemy. This marks them through walls and it increases the weapon damage by 5% to your nemesis for each second they are marked, with a cap of 50%. The holster talent's preparation increases headshot damage by 25% when scoped with the nemesis. This applies to the primary weapon too, but the twist here is that you can select a scope that is able to zoom in first person but isn't forced to, like the ACOG scope. The talent will still apply even when in third person. It combines perfectly with the reformation talent. Obviously the mods are pre-selected, meaning we can't customize this part of the weapon. The sidearm you choose doesn't really matter, as you barely ever will use it. In terms of DPS, the D50 is king of the sidearms, which is why we'll select it as our sidearm. Its active weapon talent will be Optimist, increasing weapon damage by 3% for every 10% ammo missing from the magazine. This is to boost your DPS with the weapon and ensure you get a kill with it to activate the holster talent. Passive weapon talent, as you always should select, is Allegro. It increases rate of fire by 10%, increasing your DPS slightly. The holstered weapon talent in Rhythm gives a 5% chance to refresh active skill cooldowns on getting a kill and while being equipped. This can occur once every minute and it might be useful 1 in a thousand times, but it's still good to have. It only has an optic slot where we'll select Pro Red Dot Sight for increased stability. Moving on to the skills, the most important part of the build. The primary skill equipped is the Chem Launcher with the Reinforcer variant. It disperses a cloud of gas that repairs and reinforces armor. In the Agitator slot, we want to equip the Feed Strip as it increases the ammo by up to 4 rounds for a total of 7 shots. In the Pneumatics slot, you want to equip the Disintegrating Links to increase the ammo by 4 shots again. Both can increase the ammo count of the Chem Launcher up to 4 for a total of 11 shots. This, in combination with the 10 second cooldown, means you practically can use it as much as you want. The second skill is less important as the primary will do most of the heavy lifting. It depends on the type of medic you want to be. If you want to be able to revive downed allies more effectively, the Hive with the Reviver variant is the best option. Although the larger part of the players will already run this one. If you're playing with one group member, the Seeker Mine with the Flicker variant is the smarter choice here. But I recommend the Hive with the Booster variant. It sends out micro drones that administer stimulants to increase the agent's combat efficiency. It increases weapon handling, movement and other physical abilities by roughly 20% and it lasts for 20 seconds as well. As you most likely will understand, the primary focus lies on repairing the armor of your group members, mostly through the use of the Chem Launcher. As it's equipped with up to 11 charges and has a short cooldown duration, it can be spammed. So make sure to do so. Sometimes it's even best to use proactively instead of reactively. This means that you can shoot your charge at a group member that's about to start laying down fire to prevent any damage taken in returning fire. The Hive can basically be used whenever, but the boost in handling can be used to land more consistent headshots or the boost in movement can help you get away quicker. Regarding the Hive, as soon as you deploy it and send out the micro drones, you can destruct it, as it will only apply the effect once per deployment and this way you will increase the cooldown reduction. Outside of armor repairing, your second focus should lie on taking out lower health opponents, which will mostly consist of red bar enemies. The increased health damage on your assault rifle combined with its increased assault rifle damage will tear through them and proc safeguard and reformation. Preferably shoot them from cover as it will activate the rooted talent too. Keep in mind that your armor kits can be used to heal group members too, albeit for a prolonged duration. This can be used to your advantage if you use it proactively as long as you can anticipate when your group will be taking damage. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed or used the intel brief I would like to ask you to like or dislike, share, subscribe and click the notification bell to become part of the Masterminds HD community and notification squad. On top of that, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter for daily updates and behind the scenes posts. Join my Discord if you're looking for an engaged community that revolves around Tom Clancy's Division 1 and 2. Both links are in the description. 
visit my Patreon page through the link in the description if you're interested in a build blueprint with the summarized information from this video. I'm not creating it directly, but at some point I will. To end the video, I have a question for you. How would you build your combat medic or healer build? What would you add or delete from this build to make it your own? Leave your answer in the comment section down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. I'll talk to you in the next video on Discord, Instagram, Twitter or YouTube. Peace out.